executive committee report be added? Be very brief. I would like to do the same for the VSBA just because we didn't have time to discuss at the full board. I just want some guidance in two things. Do we need to have okay. anything about the selecting folks for those two, the debt and the? Yeah. Um, we don't have those action items warned. Wait. Uh, committee members for the debt. No, but you can add. And okay. You can. We can do that. You can add them. Okay. You run, you run under Robert's rules. We just try not to do those action items. We don't try to keep it. Like to speak. Not only to speak. Um, I generally am pretty loose about that. <laughs> so, if you're here to speak to a particular item on the agenda, then you can certainly speak at that time. Can I say one thing? Mm -hmm. Yes. I was very proud of all of you. Thank you. Can I get your name? Can I get your name? I'm just kind of recording on the meeting list. Bruce Johnson. Bruce Johnson. Okay. Sorry, we all know who he is. <laughs> oh, sorry. We should have a sign-in sheet going on. Oh, send it around. Um, consent agenda 2.1, approve minutes of 820, page 2. I would make a motion to approve the minutes of 820, 18. I'll second it. Is there any uh, discussion? Seeing none and hearing none, all those in favor of approving them, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Discussion agenda, SU board goal number three, community engagement on page five. So it's all right, uh, this was one of the executive committee things, but I'll speak to it here because it's a, an item. Um, in discussions at the executive committee um, meeting, um, it was asked that we go back to the boards and encourage that the, this discussion, can, it's being continued because it's here, that it continues because there, there is uh, a variety of interpretations. I'm looking to you, Bill, you're there too, <laughs> on what constitutes community engagement. Mm -hmm. So as it's tasked as a local board requirement to, at least within our board, have a pretty clear picture of what we we come to a consensus on what we mean by that so then that voice can be carried to the executive committee and I I, I, I said we had a good conversation um, and we had others planned but I didn't feel like we had come to a board wise consensus by what we, what we how we interpreted that community engagement I think that's a fair question I think that's one that we've wrestled with a little bit. Yes? I, so I, I thought we had talked about that we needed some training before deciding what that meant to us because some of us had had the training and, and that we talked, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about this a lot. Time. Not a lot, but some time. And one of the things that we talked about was in, in So, so again, for me, it's not about the how or the what, which is what your training's about. The reason yeah. is why do you do it. Okay. That's what we're trying to get at. And I okay. know it's hard because it's so easy to talk about how we do it or what we're going to talk about. But if you but don't the have the purpose behind it, yeah. you'll be swimming. And this is what I've, I've seen in many different groups. Mm -hmm. Is that, and at least you can attest this, because I've been pushing on a pretty similar question with the leadership team. Like, if you can't tell me why we're doing it, I, we're going to have a really hard time. If we don't know the purpose. Defining the scope, right. And the timeline calls for us in October for the board chairs and executive committee to, to have a draft written purpose. So for to have a. For your executive committee meeting. Um, Probably for the full board October meeting. Okay. So, so we're almost talking about uh, it's, uh, it's a horribly overused term, but it's almost a, a mission statement for this goal. I, I'd, I'd say it's more specific than a mission statement. 
So here, uh, yeah, and I think it, it can be from, we want to ensure anything we want to hear from the community to we want to tell the community. And I, I think we're over, people are overthinking it, Probably. frankly. <laughs> I think you're overthinking it, and you're trying to be too exact. And so I know what my research says. I know that's informed my thinking of why you do community engagement, because I'm doing this with my doctoral studies. But those are the, I, I'm trying to hold myself from giving that to you, because then I'm going to inform you as to why do you want to do it as individual members and as a collective. OK. So, so maybe as a starting point, I, I'll offer kind of my impression. It, it really evolves around, revolves around two things. Do we want community input on things that we want to know about? Does that, is that what we mean by community engagement? Or do we want our community to be engaged in bringing us stuff that they're interested and concerned with? So it, it's kind of, do we, we're generating something by community engagement, do we mean having the community respond to what we've developed or are proposing? Or, kind of like the training, do we want to develop community engagement where the community formulates opinions or, you know, something that's got, possibly nothing to do with what the boards particularly, you know, I don't know. Let me pick something. So the community feels like the all the classrooms should be painted blue. I'm intentionally picking something just silly, right? Mm -hmm. It's not on our agenda, but it's something the community feels strongly about. Um, that's community engagement as well. So again, the why, why do we want it, what's the purpose of it informs does it have to be one or the other? No, I don't think so. I'm just <laughs> no. I'm trying to start a conversation. That's no. all. I, go ahead. Well, I was saying, to me, I, we need both. So if we have to, not a mission statement, but just say we, as as a as a board, we want to in, inform and have the community um, understand what why we are having this best practice. Like we had this retreat. So maybe our community engagement is about um, the community being informed and understanding so that they can trust uh, where we're going. So that's one part and then the, of why we want community engagement and the second part is to leave it open to community to form their own groups as how, you know, bringing stuff to us but that we can't control that. So. It seems it's like we're a public really board, so yeah. community involvement is the whole purpose. We're serving the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't. I so I like if 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 I had my best wish, I will I will like sort of out of the blue, a community member come up to us and say, I would want to have uh, you know to put an example, we put the Black Fight Lives Matter flag up. You know, I would want to have a conversation about you know. Uh, race and diversity in our community and have their own group working on how are we, you know, how can they help us have uh, a better understanding of equity and diversity in our community. But having them work on that separately. But f for our purposes right now, considering where we are, is more about creating, you know, informing understanding and getting input in what we want. Okay. I don't so think you, I don't think you can expect the community to be informed or understand what you're doing when you don't put information to the community. Yeah. I I know the school. I can go to the website and see what's going on in the classrooms. I can read the newsletters, but I cannot find out what the board is doing. I search and I click and I try and go to the websites for the agendas, for the minutes. They're not posted for East Montpelier. They're posted for all the other schools in the district. I don't understand why they're not. I don't understand why I know that Front Porch Forum is not the legal place to put the agendas. I mean, you have like three posting sites for that. And I know Front Porch Forum isn't, but there are other, in this 
district that puts stuff on a porch forum. It doesn't mean you have to engage in a back and forth mm -hmm. with them because you probably don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. But um, it's information, and information is power, and mm -hmm. people don't mm -hmm. have it. They cannot under begin to understand what you're doing. And I, I'm an informed person. I'm mm -hmm. a political person. I pay attention on all levels. And um, it's very frustrating for me when I can't find out that information. So from a real basic point of view, I just wish you would put out more information. Put a synopsis out on front porch forum. Like, you know, put your minutes on front porch forums just so people read them so that they're more aware so that's our goal. That's a good goal. So, well, I'm, I'm hearing a problem. One is that the finding of, of this information is it's problematic. And that's an operational issue for the board to figure out. Well, and you but they right. are on the switched them. your school board agenda sites. If you go to the school website, the school board site is different It's under now. WCSU now. Yeah, so yeah. it looks that happened. it's fine, but it's like there was no agenda posted under that. Right, so that's a problem that's in my problem. mind. Okay. So uh, that's an operational problem yeah. that this board needs to but that's fix. But that's a place where people go to get information. Yeah. And if they go there and it's not there, it's like, well, um, right. you know. Fair. Well, it has to be there, and we have to make sure that it right. is there. It has to be there, so we will make sure that it is there in the future. Um, just to summarize the conversation that I've heard so far, it sounds like we have two pieces of this goal. We want to inform so that the community understands what we're doing. And then we want input, and I'm putting my own color on this, so if it's too much, you won't hurt my feelings. Uh, but we want input so that we are operating in a way that is reflective of our community's values. I get the first one, I have no idea what the second one is. No. I'm projecting one of my own personal fears, which is that I'm putting opinions out that are mine, but aren't necessarily the community's. So uh, that may be more reflective of a personal well, I just want to make sure I'm bringing to the executive committee. I, I think I understand, so others can, I'm only asking kind of clarifying questions. Yeah. I'm comfortable with whatever we want to do. Um, the first part is to improve the sharing of what we're mm -hmm. doing with the community. And the second part would be to improve or enhance our ability to receive feedback from the community. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that, mm -hmm. yeah. to me, that becomes the purpose. Mm -hmm. We want to get better at disseminating information and we want to create a better mechanism to receive information. Is, is that, the, is there consensus that that's what I bring forward to the executive committee around purpose? I mean, I'm trying not to get into the house, so <laughs> yes, I agree. But I, I will always struggle with, like I, I appreciate that you are, you go for the information and you look for it, but I also wanna figure out how to engage the people that don't do that and don't pursue mm -hmm. the the websites and the front porch forums that they're sitting at home maybe complaining about the school for some reason and we're not hearing that and we're not able to defend why we support what Alicia's trying to do and mm -hmm. yeah. Paul. Engagement has to go both ways. <clears throat>
that's how you're going to transfer a lot of your information that you want to get out <coughs> is once you've got the activity or whatever it is that has come back to you through <coughs> the interaction uh, in place and working, then you have that constant chance to get your knowledge to the parents and the kids. And believe me, the kids move it for you. <laughs> uh, and we found that to work very well over the last decades here in East Montpelier. And, uh, so you're, you're right that you definitely need to cultivate <coughs> the, the parent, and not necessarily just parents, but uh, you need to get all of us who are grandparents or neighbors or whatever. That's the piece that we're wrestling with, to be yeah. honest. But I think, too, well, that, um, you know, front porch form, I have a love-hate relationship with it. It's just like, come on, another dog loose. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Everybody in town knows that that dog is loose. Yeah. So if, if you're putting stuff there, um, people are going to start talking about it. And people are, and that's the good thing. People need to be talking with their neighbor. Oh, I saw it on, you know. All those kids at the school, they're doing this, this, you know. I, I just think that it's, it's valuable. And like I said, I, you know, the Front Porch Forum is not the end all and the be all, but it, it is mm -hmm. a start because people wait for five o'clock and oops, somebody did another front porch. It's summer. interesting. <laughs> Excuse me, it's interesting to listen to people when they come to the cookout <laughs> at Airman on Friday night or something, sitting at the tables <laughs> and talking. And the different things that they're talking about. <clears throat> and it may be schools, it may be, you know, jobs. It could be where they went last weekend. It could be where they're going next year. It could be a gazillion different things. But they aren't necessarily related to what they're doing at that particular moment. But it's, it's the opportunity mm -hmm. that you want, <clears throat> you really need. And this, this is one of the things that is why we were having the run around we were just having in the last session is because we have worked our way out of <coughs> that kind of community where that happens constantly. And people are in tune with, oh, such and such is going on at this Montpelier Elementary School and we need to be down there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and not just the parents of the kids that are going, but you know, the general community and they, go there and are part of it. And, and one of the reasons why <coughs> there's a lot of this flag is because, you know, these towns have always seen their little elementary schools as the center of things. And, you know, when something threatens that, they get yep. excited about it. You can't blame them. So <coughs> that's, that's why it's, it really has to go both ways. And, uh, <coughs> And that's something that takes time. You know, you're not going to get it in a month. It literally takes years to work on it. You have to start when the kids are little, or, you know, <coughs> people constantly ask us how, how we have the community that we have, say, in Adamant or in Maple Corner or whatever. And we tell them, well, it's, it's work, but it's something that everybody just sees the value in once you're inside it. If you tell you are, and you just think, well, what the hell, it's just another word. <coughs> right. But I think I have yeah. guidance to yeah. go forward with that. Yeah. Can I just ask uh, one more question? Ellen, one more question. Um, just for, so on French Forum, do you, so I find the meeting minutes to be a little bit dry, and I'm not sure as a community member I would click on <laughs> them. Are you are you suggesting posting other things that maybe aren't just meeting minutes, but like just blurbs about you know? I mean, what? Yeah. 
Well, I guess the PR. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that is the ultimate. Ellen, she has a good point. Even as, even though you may not click on it, someone else will. Right. Yes. Or someone, yeah. Ellen will read it and say, "Hey, Darcy, you know the minutes are posted on Front Porch Forum." And you'll be like, "Oh crap! I want to go to that meeting yeah. tonight. Let me go back and search and print." So although the information may not be read at that exact moment, it does create that buzz. Because I know how many times have we been like, "Oh, I'm looking for something." Oh, hey. I saw this on front porch forum. I got a champ. I actually got a trampoline on front porch forum. <laughs> you know, like and different. That's how stuff starts, and you go back and search. That's a nice thing with front porch forum and other online sites. Is not necessarily people may not look at the information right at that exact moment you want them to, but it does create that buzz. People will go back and say, "Oh, <coughs> what was talked about at the mm -hmm. meeting?" You know, they'll even if they don't look at the minutes the very next day. I'll be like, hey, uh, Rose, you were at the meeting. Did you look at the minutes? And I'll say, oh, yeah, let me go on front porch forum. I do remember seeing it up there. And it's mm -hmm. easy to search. So. so I think one of the things that we've wrestled with is we've talked about posting things on front porch forum. And it always ends up being, well, it's too dry, so we should make it be something more than just the minutes. And then it becomes a bunch of work. And then it just doesn't get done. But I think Palace <laughs> just has Sue so, yeah. post them. I think Sue yeah. just posts so, them. I read the minutes from all the schools. Uh, understood. I so I, I think we've been our own worst enemy in that. In a little thinking bit. that. Yeah. yeah. The people who so. like dry stuff will read it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think perhaps a good start is to just start the posting the minutes and the agendas to Front Porch Forum. There's something yeah. that, that the classroom is doing that, that isn't going to violate privacy or anything like that. Maybe some kid writes a posting for it. I don't know. You know, just to... Yeah. You know, the Harvest Dinner, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Tyling is always posting mm -hmm. stuff on Front Porch Forum that she's playing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I see it all. The Harvest Dinner was just on there on the last mm -hmm. one. And I don't, yep. I mean, and even in the, you can, it has headings now, so you can look and see what you want to look at and scroll to it. You mm -hmm. know, when I see something, and you recognize names, when you see, whenever I see something from the school, I mean, I scroll to it, because sometimes I don't always read the newsletter, but then it's also on front porch form what it is, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's coming up. So it's also a good reminder. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to move us on to Act 46 update. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we haven't talked we about Act talked 46 about enough tonight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Crickets? Crickets. <laughs> yeah. um, does anybody have anything to add? So I, I just want to, like, for the record, clarify my position for that second vote. I thought the question was a little vague, and I abstained because... I am willing to uh, consider a vote or a joining of the lawsuit at, a, at another time. I just want more information and I don't want it to look like I what am absolutely going to commit to him. Uh, mm -hmm. So I just want to clarify that that was my position. I did, I'm not against uh, joining the uh, lawsuit. I just, the way the, the question was uh, formed, I want to just clarify that I would, I didn't. There was an outcome that was just being. Yeah. Well, if two and a half years ago we would have taken this to voters, we wouldn't be at this place, but we didn't. And I'm sorry that when we talk about community involvement, yeah. none of us ever heard from the voters yeah. um, about this it's topic. Big and that's a frustration of mine. <laughs> you could have tried it yeah. I couldn't have. And the committee was completely okay. shut down with that supermajority business two yeah. and a half years ago. But an alternative structure didn't take a vote. I would have liked to have heard a vote from voters if to hear what's going on. If I could mm -hmm. have a little input. Yeah, you had a lot um, <laughs> from, from my perspective, we never had anything to bring to the community to share. No, it wasn't allowed. We never, we never developed anything. But I, I just want to say for the record, I don't remember how many updates. I actually can pull, you know, like mm -hmm. pull out all of the updates because I have over 24 or 25 updates that we wrote, that we put in the, in the Front Porch Forum, that we put mm -hmm. in the EMS, in the signpost letter. So every time we had a meeting, 
you know, it, either Ivy and myself wrote an update for, for the community. And as we got into the second part of the community, we didn't, but let's not, you know, dwell on that because we've done enough at 46, I think, for today. And we clearly understand that we need to do a better job of communicating. Like, you know, it's not for lack of trying because I think we all try really hard to communicate and we just need a better way to do it, but we've been trying. One of my biggest frustrations and disappointments is that I've never heard anybody on that big board or anybody here say, I mean, it's not going to say me. We all know it's not going to say me. How is it going to improve academic, educational opportunities for students? I have never heard anybody answer. I've never heard anybody issue give a report, give one example, nothing. If I asked you all to write down on a piece of paper, right now by yourself, and then one by one read it, would you say, what is it going to do to improve educational opportunities for students? No one in the community has ever heard that. People who have concerns about that 46 have never heard it with all due respect to someone who's been on the E32 school board for 18 years, she has never said what she did to change anything and increase educational opportunities for students. I've never heard it. And if she was on the board for 18 years, maybe that was a talent of the board. But um, well, I've, I've never heard it from anybody. That's I have, I, I have said it several times, it's in the minutes, but um, this is where I get to the discussion of something to share with the community and specifics on the benefits. We, we never got to the point where we could talk about specifics. For all that talk, we never got anywhere. But what even did you envision? So there was never any kind of dream as to how it would look. There was never no no oh well gee maybe we can do this this or this and it was just never articulated and maybe that's where the break. Well, was. some of the things were articulated mm -hmm. like what? around magnet schools mm -hmm. that be could become possibilities. Um, Choice around um, for teacher contracts, improving um, protection, job protection, yep. flexibility. around flexibility on being able to attend schools outside of your town lines, on... Stephen, can I say one thing? Hmm? Uh, so from my perspective, coming in late, I, I was not up on Act 46 when I joined the board, and that was, I mean, I tried to come up on it but I did watch about 10 videos of the meetings and it was it was interesting and it always coming in one of the things that I felt was always tough is anytime you brought up something that could be beneficial in my opinion I'll say we started talking about callus and I'm not saying that I ever want to close callus but in the scenario where there was going to be a three uh, three kid kindergarten um, I felt challenged or felt that I couldn't bring up the possibility of that benefit being bringing those kids to East Monthly or, or Worcester or whatever because I felt like that fed into the, dis the, the belief of other community members that we built our, you know, we had the big bond and we did our school to absorb callus. Because I know, I mean, I, I, I know enough about these guys to know that this was not, that was not the goal or the plan. So that was one area where I felt like a school merger could have solved a, a small classroom size that could be beneficial to, to, to kids because the studies show that classroom sizes less than 10 have an effect on, on social development of children. Um, so from my standpoint, coming in late, that was one thing I saw, but I felt like, I think I did mention it, but I always felt like I was going to take a little bit of a hit because it sounded like I was trying to take over Callis. Well, I, and I would add, I, 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 I came across too defensive. I, I completely 
empathize and agree with your frustration around the whole um, topic and sharing of information, how it all transpired. Uh, I'm, I, 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 I'm in agreement on how you feel. That's how I felt. Regardless of what outcome was wanted, um, it was a very frustrating process. So, yeah, I, I mean, I'd like to, can, I'd like to allow can, enough yeah. discussion uh, for yeah. healing, but we also need to move yeah. forward on yeah. what we need to do. Okay. Um, I'm going to move us to uh, the reports to the board administration, which is in your uh, WCSU board packet. Yeah, Here you want mine? No, it's okay. I have. I don't know if there's any questions or. Here we go. Six pages. <laughs> mine, mine is, um, I I want to say I really appreciated that table that you sent us. It really made a really good way to understand the population of school MTVs and the TDS and, and where people are and easier to communicate. And, yeah. So thank you. And, and if there's any questions on the table. I, did, I had a question about the paras. They say EMES employees, but then it says special ed para. So, so is it under the special ed reimbursement, or? They are under special ed reimbursement, but um, para educators are uh, local. They're not WCSU employees. Okay. So they are under our budget, where special educators are under the WCSU budget. But they are reimbursable. That's the, what I The para educators, with the exception of Jane Badger, who falls right. under ESP, right. are so all special. Recognizing that if I see a bunch of people looking at blank tables, oh. would <laughs> anybody like the principal's report? <laughs> is it online also? It is. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's supposed to be online. <laughs> it is supposed to be online because it's part of the full board packet. It is supposed to be online. It may be at the WCSU. On the, no, um, on the WCSU. Not, uh, but it wasn't there yet. It, okay. it, it, it was got one of those when you looked for it, you saw where prior meetings were nicely laid out on the ESS site. Up until this year, these, yeah. yeah. the recent one, no. no. Can you go to the website? Um, yeah, yes. I'm looking right now. I had the advantage of um, what I was looking I for because I had seen Lindy's email. This is a little opportunistic, but I will just mention that WCSU has been looking for a technology coordinator, and they finally hired one who was starting October 1st. And I'm going to put a plug in. He is a flipping rock star. Mm -hmm. I, he worked for me for five years. He's fantastic. But will his job include something like website oversight? It seems like he's more the uh, whole He's system. more a grand scheme of things, but he will make things get done. Mm -hmm. I have full confidence. So just a little editorial plug for Keith. He's fantastic, and I couldn't be more excited for all of us to have him taking care of the tech. We will be able to find him. That is the hope. Scroll up to school board. Stay tuned. <laughs> um, okay. If there aren't questions, I do have an update to give you. Um, it's not anything you need to approve because it falls under the ESP contract, but our um, head cook, Susan Olander, mm -hmm. gave her resignation just mm -hmm. before the first day of school. Um, she had an um, opportunity she couldn't pass up in another state, and she has relocated. That left us without a cook. Um, we have since hired one. Um, her name is Ann Finnegan. She has over 30 years experience as a head cook. Um, much of those 30 years are in elementary schools. Um, and she'll be starting with us on Monday, October 1st. Excellent. And that has happened since the report. But she's on our, she's on our form. A little chart. I made. know, I, I, because I, I added her. Because that came out after this. So if you're wondering who Ann Money is, and well, I had seen the ad in the paper for Susan or in the somewhere. And 
went around asking people what's going on because I was worried about her health. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah. So. All good things. For her. Okay. Um, fiscal report. Which is on page. So you should have that on page eighty-one. Um, so I'll have on the side. Yeah, I'll look at it. I don't know if there's any questions. This is just kind of the beginning of the year. We had some savings um, and staffing changes. We had some retirements and hiring of new staff um, was a savings of about um, $17,000. And we also had, because of student needs changing, um, at the beginning of this year as opposed to last year, we decreased a 0.5 paraeducator. Um, other than that, there's really no, it's just the, the roll up that happened over summer, um, which puts our fund balance at about 5.3%. I don't know if there's any questions or specifics. Mine's a retroactive question. Did we have a rollover fund balance from last year's budget? No. So we still need to do that? If that's what you want to do. You didn't have the number for that until tonight. Okay. I think we in, we yeah, intended to do that. Yeah. Take money from the yeah. fund balance and put it into. We always put a chunk in yeah. capital. You usually go to four percent, mm -hmm. which is the targeted amount. Um, what what is over right now is fifty two thousand five hundred twenty four dollars. Right. So, for next so meeting, maybe next meeting we'll have an action agenda to. Yeah. Uh, so what is our target for our capital fund? I mean it's. Pretty substantial compared to all the other schools. <laughs> the target for our capital fund is to never have to bond. Well, well and I get that. I understand. <laughs> but I mean, is that, you know, I assume we're not going to try to get to $10 million. So. Uh, no, no, but no, it no. will be multiple millions if we yeah. do it right. Okay. Because we literally, it, the idea is that we, uh, as capital. Um, repairs and stuff need to be made. We, do we will them. have the money set aside to do them. Right. So that's where the capital plan comes in, where we want to make sure that you know these things don't get too far apart from each other, but then that they also don't cross to the point where we're going into debt because we need to spend money that we don't have. Right. No, I mean, so I'm just I'm curious as to if there's a, an overall. The short answer is I don't think we have the number at the end of the day for what the sort of top of that fund would look like. Well, we have an idea. We have a capital mm -hmm. uh, capital plan now, and we right now we're healthy where we actually, when we were at the 900,000, we were exactly where we needed to be. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and right now we are in the seven something, seven, 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 seven something. But we have done also that number we hadn't updated because we did some work we over upgraded, the summer. So and that number would have gone down. The work that needed to happen. So, so there is a target, and there was a target given even when we had through Act 46, and we had those presentations of uh, part of the not necessarily part of the efficiencies, but they showed each school the amount of money that we needed to have i don't have those numbers fresh on my mind yeah. but so so we do have uh, an idea of that of that target so the short answer is that we're um, putting money aside so that we uh, are on track right so that we're that sort of taking money out at about the same rate that we're putting in we don't have you know taxpayer dollars just sitting there forever okay. doing nothing so, but and yeah and then the other thing is that we are in the process of doing so like next week we will receive some some furniture which was planned for you know this summer is just it takes a while to come and then every year we we have an idea of what we need to spend and for example right now we we need to target the the cameras you know there's been some activity in the rec field so we had talked at our last meeting that we needed to do the cameras in the other side of the building where we don't have where we don't have any. Uh, there's the, the lighting of the gym that we had put up. So it's kind of scheduled. So the light on the gym and the shelving in the in the garage. Uh, there are some. There's some. Projects. There's some capital kind of project for getting all the. Yeah. Right. Um, Can I just ask a yeah. point? <laughs> Yes. What rec field is she's? Oh, um, uh, the back not, playground and. No. No. Uh, no. If it's rec field, it's town. Yeah. <laughs> your your no. mowers have your mowers have reported suspicious activity to us. 
Um, <laughs> and sorry, we, have, cut we have no cameras. We don't have any cameras. Right. The, the cameras that we have aren't actually cameras, they're the buzzer system, so there's no recording or anything. Yeah. We don't have a security system in that sense. We need one, yeah. Um, and it's something, you know, for you to, to talk, I know we've talked about it last year, but um, well, given some recent reports, I think it's probably a good time to think about it, that there has been reports of suspicious activity. Um, and we have, there's, there's really no way of seeing any part of that building at any time. Mm -hmm. And it is the only place also when the teachers and other people are trying to come in into the school that we can't let them in unless they have a key. Yeah, they bring their keys. They bring their keys up. There's quite a few grants out there for safety right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I know we've upgraded all of ours at the schools where I work because of these grants. Um, and the safe schools grants. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Particularly around cameras. Those, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's something we're talking about as an issue with all the schools because we're in, we're all in pretty similar places. Right. I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was this part of the work that came out of uh, Mark Moody's So assessment? that was a recommendation that came out of his report, yeah. And we've just not done anything security-wise mm -hmm. to the building. Does everybody know what I was referencing? We had, we had a consultant come in and do an assessment of the school. Remind me why. What was the driver um, for right that? Right after construction, we did it in probably 2015 just to look at the building and to see how secure it was. Um, we put a lot of measures in place, got rid of the exterior classroom doors and had the buzzer system, the vestibules. Um, and then, so he went through and kind of audited and looked at all of that to see how secure the building really was and made some recommendation based on that. And it's kind of a continuum of, you know, do you want some cameras or do you want bulletproof glass, right? Like there's a lot, there's a, <laughs> wide range of what you could do to a school. Um, probably the most basic would be security cameras. And who did the audit or the? Secure your building, it was Mark Moody, the retired resource officer. Um, he works with the um, VSBA. And we were also part of that <laughs> state, state safety audit so by the state police. Year, yeah, and interviewed us and, and um, we're impressed with how we were using what we have, but they didn't really come back with any recommendations. They just were kind of auditing what what we had. Okay. Uh, keep this moving. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, action agenda. Um, appoint board representat representative proxy for VHI and Bisbet annual meetings. I, I nominate Floor. So is it that no, 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 no. So oh, to clarify. Oh, yeah. I thought this was on the floor. Um, there's a, I don't know what page it is. Bill wrote a little note a on letter, page yeah. seven mm -hmm. after so, our agenda on what this is. Um, but it's, it's um, does everybody see that? Mm -hmm. So issue? so usually uh, Bill is the representative for the VHI and VSVET annual uh, meeting, and there's one vote there. and. The other part of it is the voting for resolutions, which is separate, <laughs> and that is um, voting for the VSBA, so it's two, two separate things, but I think they're just as late there, and it was in his memo. Yeah. So there's something for Ruben to sign if you're in agreement to have Bill be the representative. Does so everybody see the... Yeah, I see yeah. the memo. And the executive committee of Washington Central Supervisory Union already pointed floor mm -hmm. as the um, Vermont School Boards Association rep. So do we need a motion for this? this I think we just have... Um, well, VSBIT and VHI are different than different. VSBA. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Do we so need a motion to... That? We need a motion to... So I'd make a motion that we appoint uh, Superintendent Bill Kimball as the board representative proxy for... Beehive Visbit annual meetings. I'll second it. Oh, were you going to say that? <laughs> I was going to say oh. it. <laughs> Next motion you can make, I'll be quiet. <laughs> Is there any discussion of that? Seeing none and hearing none, all of those in favor, please say aye. 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 5.2 Approve joining legal action to oppose state board ruling if forced into merger. I would make that motion. Oops. <laughs> 
table Sorry, it. I just I like was, to move things I was going to suggest along. we table that motion. <laughs> we can't table it. Okay. Approve joining legal action to oppose the. You can. Oh yes, this. Ruben needs to reply to them by the twenty oh, eighth oh, of September. Oh, 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 and you need no. to add your other two pieces. Yeah. Yeah. From earlier. Yeah. Oh, point the, yeah. yeah. the committee appointees. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry. So go ahead. Yeah, I put those on as act as okay, five point four and five point five. Yeah. I make a motion to approve with joining legal action to oppose state board ruling if forced into a merger. I second. <laughs> um, okay. Is there any discussion of this item? Hi. The strong vote we had in there. I don't. I personally am not. I don't have enough information to do that. So that's just. And I voted that way there. I think right, we wait to see what the state board says. I think the are we I think the this question is are we going to join now? Right. And we answer right. So just to be clear, if we approve five point two, then we are saying that we are signing on. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I understand. You just phrased it differently, yeah. Yes, it's worded differently than so when we were in the other room. Right. Yeah. That's why I clarified. So if you don't want to join this, then you would want to vote no on this. <laughs> so, then we, so then we should keep this language and not what you out. just said because we're ways. Oh, I, read, I read it verbatim. When I, oh, you did? Read oh, that. you read it in the That's why it's confusing. To oppose. Oh, I'm so right. It's okay. A little clumsily. It, it sounds like you're voting to oppose, but you're voting to join the legal We're action. voting to join the legal action. Right. This is a vote to join the legal action. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. If we talk this out. Can the public ask what you're actually voting on? Are you voting to join? Is this motion an affirmative join? <laughs> the it's motion, a, yes. the motion is on the table if we say okay. yes, is to say if we say yes, then we want to join. Okay. What just happened? That they was a different place. So, let it, let it. And that was so, a strong vote. That was a straw was vote. Non I I, I'm going to summarize just, uh, just <laughs> for, please correct me if I speak out of turn. I think this board is opposed to this, so this motion is unlikely to pass. Yeah. We're opposed but to joining, is what the straw the vote showed in the other we room. We are opposed but they worded to it joining the lawsuit. In the, other room. the way this is worded is approve joining legal action to yeah. oppose the state board ruling if forced into a motion. Uh, merger so we would if we don't want to join the legal action this is the class oh, action no. lawsuit that's been that's Are been ill-defined has no parameters that, right right but that has a deadline of two days from now means you will yeah. correct. 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 correct that is correct so we just clarified it yes. Yes. that's why i'm saying yeah. i think this motion is very unlikely to pass yeah. in this room <laughs> Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Um, any further discussion? All of those in favor of approving joining the legal action to oppose state board ruling if forced into a merger, please say aye. Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. <laughs> Abstentions. The Can motion I fails. The yeah. Yeah. Why on earth would you make the motion? Because we, have, we, to, to show. we have to report something to someone in our district. Well, I, I mean, that's a fair question. That's what I was asking if we could we, table it. <laughs> we <laughs> but I, probably but don't. Um, but we've been pretty consistent. And personally, um, I think that the unity that has been showed on the greater board so far has been because we haven't found, and I'm going to use um, Matt's words, we haven't gone a bridge too far. And I think this is an important signal for this board to say this is a bridge too far for us to the larger board. Obviously, I agree with your end result. I'm uh, 
wondering about that. how the, you got there. Yeah. But, but, we're talking about now. This is a, this is a now. Yeah. So this is, this is in response to, to a, a request that yeah. was made of the board chair. We yeah. could have just elected to ignore it. Yeah. Or you could have it could have. We, we could yeah. have changed it. We yeah. could have made a motion that didn't have a second. We could have done a lot of things. Um, I personally, I feel like this is making a statement that we are not, we are, we are opposed to this. This motion went down. And I'm comfortable with the minutes reflecting that. It just makes for a scary scenario when you're out here. The way to hear the motion yeah, come no, I got confused too. Yeah. As if we're approved. So from my that. perspective, it, this motion is the same on every every yeah. board's right. agenda tonight. Yeah. So I think it was important for us to keep it the same so that we could see that yes for some and no for others. And so that's my okay. take on it. Okay. Um, I'm going to move us to 5.3. Rescind the East Montpelier Policy C1 board meeting agenda preparation. I think meeting. you know, I would table recommend this. we are yeah. going to yeah. table. Until the other policies are Until passed. Until the other policies have been passed. Yeah. That was the discussion that I remembered as well. Thank you. On to 5.4. Um, appoint committee member for Act 46, Articles of Agreement Committee. Were you saying under your breath you wanted to do that? No, I was saying it's not on mine. I must. No, it's no, he's no. added it. Oh, we we okay. added it at the beginning of the meeting. I missed that, sir. I would do articles of agreement, but not with that. Unless there's somebody else that is urgent. That I, that. I, I'm pretty sure I just heard Flora nominate herself. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's a done deal. There's no... <laughs> I. You <laughs> <laughs> may make a motion. Uh, yes. I'll make a motion to nominate Floor <laughs> to uh, the Articles of Agreement Artic Committee. Articles of Agreement Committee. Second. I can't read that. Any discussion? No. no. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Thank you. And uh, appoint a committee member for the Act 46 debt. Study committee. I appoint Stephen. Did they decide to say no? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the negotiating team. That's true. Yes, and, yes, and, yes. And we're gearing up next week, and I, and I'm also on the twin field That's true. exploratory team. I I can't add yeah. Yeah. something else to my plate. Lindy. So that leaves three other people. Feel, I don't feel like I have enough. In, I I. I I personally, I have the interest, but I do not have the bandwidth to do it. All right. Oh, you will? No, I will, but I'm going to need <laughs> guidance. Uh, no, you'll be fine. Well, I think anybody's going to need guidance. Yeah, you'll be fine. You because don't I don't. Guidance. It will be totally fine. <laughs> For you. Um, I don't know what help I can offer, but if you have yeah. questions, but let's yeah. let's I'll, I'll nominate and second and vote yes, and then yes. we can talk yeah. later. I'll assign um, Edie to you. <laughs> I nominate Darcy. <laughs> no. Second. Aye. Discussion. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Would you like to abstain for your, <laughs> for your own vote? Um, that brings us to the board order, which I passed on. So can, can I just ask the question, since we brought it up in the Act 46, I just wanted to get a better sense of the, of the board. If we need to restructure in order to... That's a we, good question. We, you know what I'm heading yes. to. Yes. So the transitional, the transitional board, board is a question that at least I've had. Okay. And, uh, in, so this is what I was going to say at the full board and just bit my tongue because I saw Matthew wanting to try to get through everything. Um, and, and we've got some other board people here. Even with our own board, we designate alternates. Mm -hmm. And if the primary, so we have a chair and we have an assistant chair. Yeah. 
we have that because the board chair can't always be there. If the board chair can't be there, the assistant chair is there. I think we can do, the, the clerk can either do it or we can designate an alternate clerk and then if the head person can't do it, then the alternate does it. I mean, I just don't see where that creates a problem. And yeah, I agree, just to I be just very wonder. clear, I will cheerfully and immediately see my spot. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't I, see I, it I just, as wanna... seating a spot. I'm yeah. saying boards allow for primary and for right. alternates. And if mm -hmm. the primary can't be there, the alternate is there. Yeah. And it sounds like there is capacity, like that's not going to be a problem. I, you know, if somebody is unwilling or unable, mm -hmm. those are the words. Yeah, I just want to. And the board can appoint somebody else in their place. Well, and I think there's enough time yeah. in the interim that we're talking about the transitional board that's envisioned. It's, it's spelled out in the statute that the board chair and the clerk mm -hmm. are the two people that serve on the transitional board. And it's um, the board chair and clerk as of July, July of 2018. 15. And it's the first meeting, it looks like when I'm reading these draft articles is election day plus 14 days so it would be after town meeting no no no, no, no that's no, the no, real that's board election that's day. the real board the transitional yeah, yeah, the board, board. Yeah. the oh, transitional board would be oh, until until town meeting day basically organizational meeting plus 14. like november 30th november 30th it's on. like a 60 mm -hmm. day okay. Right. Okay. yeah but i think that would be the way to go so the board chair and clerk are appointed and if the board chair and the clerk want to do that they do that there's no way around it mm -hmm. if the board chair or the clerk is unable to do it mm -hmm. then we have an appointed alternate right. that can go to to be a representative for east montpelier yep. mm -hmm. i mean from yeah um, I, I think it makes perfect sense i also don't think the transitional board should be concerned I don't, I don't either. I'm concerned. I don't either. It will be very much. I think the, that committee you form will be the, where the game is. And the transitional board will just carry forward the work of the mm -hmm. committees. That's the, that, that was the view of the executive committee. That's why you form committees. Mm -hmm. So that you're not trying to cram stuff in. Mm -hmm. Should it come to that. The executive committee. And executive committee and included some people that are opposed to this and want lawsuits but executive committee agreed it was prudent regardless of how you felt on the issue to make sure you're prepared for multiple scenarios mm -hmm. and not all put all your eggs in one basket and then mm -hmm. find yourself behind the eight ball yeah. so it was prudent to do this article of agreement do some of this work ahead of time yeah okay do you believe that brings us to the board order? I make a motion to approve the board order of $32,573.48. Second. I'm your second tonight. <laughs> and I will add, I, I'm wicked psyched. Wicked psyched? I'm very excited <laughs> when board orders are like $32,000. <laughs> right. Yeah, but that last one was hundreds of dollars. I know. I know. <laughs> Millions. It was, the it was the whole um, summer thing or something. <laughs> It's just Although more in my comfort zone because compared to a million and a half, I feel like, oh my God, I'm signing that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Sorry. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Thank you. That brings us to adjournment. Aye. Unless there is other. Oh, executive just, committee and school oh, and board executive committee. committee. I'm so sorry. That my executive committee take five seconds because it was Matthew already alluded to it that. Um, all the executive committee members we're going to bring to our local boards please 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 if we're going to task our administrators with anything let's make sure it's something that's super important right now mm -hmm. because they're going to be very busy with the act 46 work and very busy with what was his other priority student he's ahead too anyway and the, 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 the executive committee was Let's just make sure everyone's aware of all the work that the leadership team and the principals and the 
superintendent are doing. It's not to say don't ask them stuff, but be mindful of it. And if it's something that really we could wait to get in next summer, then wait. Don't start piling more and more stuff. So can I just say, I am not even thinking about I-46, um, and my priority is the building. I'm so sure. we can pile on you? <laughs> Act 46, I'm sure, is on Bill's plate, but it is, he has taken that off of our plates. That's not, mm -hmm. I don't want that to be my priority. Well, I, I, so for the Act 40 stuff, six, it was more the central office yes, stuff. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. central and, office. and board members, and I would, I won't make a comment. Okay. Board members can have a habit of asking um, people that work in the central office for something, yes. um, which we shouldn't do should come from the board it shouldn't come yeah. from individuals but just to be mindful mm -hmm. that you know it, the example bill gave that matthew requested something he was like we can do that it's going to take 15 hours it's 15 hours less we have to spend on this other project you want us to do um so just be mindful of that i mean it's, it's i think it's always good mm -hmm. that we're mindful of what we ask for indeed may i ask a question on bill brought up one other element of that and it had to do with the health care fiasco. Has he ever put numbers to that regarding the amount of admin time that has gone to trying to clear up the health? I think he did. I think he did. Yeah. Last yeah. three, four, yeah. the director's report, and eight, yeah. Yeah, my computer is dead, but it is there. In the packet from our last meeting? Um, no, 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 this meeting no, for that. Sometimes. Three, four, I'll, I can. Because it had, I mean, it, doesn't appear that it's gotten less as the year has gone on being a teacher who is on that plan and seeing in my district what's going no, on with it. But it's, it's hundreds it's, of it's, hours, I can tell yeah. you that. It's hundreds. Um, I can <laughs> and it's yeah. statewide and it's costing um, a lot. I can't imagine so it's going to be any better next year. This no. statement, um, it, it's on page 101. Since the middle of spring, central office has become increasingly overtaxed by the increase um, shifting of work to provide benefits to our staff, um, incurred hundreds of hours of overtime, um, currently overtaxing staff. So they are looking at... I think um, we've just hired another position, position because yeah. we spent so much money on overtime, it was cheaper to hire a new position for administrative support around that For the next problem. two and a half years, because for the benefit, yeah, mm -hmm. it's all around. So I can jump into the BSBA because it's related. Uh, so one of the things that I want to report back is that uh, Matthew and the board had sent a letter to the BSBA, uh, your representative from Washington and Orange, to see if the BSBA would either join an amicus brief or file a lawsuit regarding the, the future planning associates. Mm -hmm. And the response from the complete board was no, not because we don't feel the pain, but the only two ways that we have, we don't have the, the money necessary to start with, but also as the BSBA has to be something that benefits all of the districts in the state, and we don't have the legal capacity to coordinate that. So, so Bill and John from Barry brought it over to the BSBA and suggested that they go, they have their insurance file that claim and seek legal action, not because of lack of not wanting to help. So we are willing to do an amicus brief if once the lawsuit is filed, but we don't have the ability to carry on a lawsuit in behalf of the two supervisory units. Mm -hmm. And then the, the last thing is that since I would be voting for resolutions and we were not able to go through the resolutions uh, tonight, I can send you an email on that. There's already a recommendations from the board, but there were just a, one that I wanted, well, two, one that I wanted to uh, bring up that was brought by the Burlington School District, and, and that one is that the Vermont School Board Association advises the Vermont General Assembly to allow reasonable time for school districts to plan for cost containment legislation and refrain from passing legislation that affects budgets already adopted by school boards or approved by voters. And I thought everybody would be happy about that. <laughs> So it's not like this means any, it, this is just guidance for Nicole when she is at the State House, but to try to avoid the fiasco that we've been having. 
And then the only other one that I thought it, you guys might want to, I, I needed some guidance because we didn't, we just didn't say pass or not pass, is that it also the, um, the Burlington School District but brought up it should the VSBA as a whole um, give some guidance. We, the VSBA has stayed away from that on uh, supporting gun control, you know, so I should read you what it actually says because that's the one that district here. Yeah, so here, it, it was sorry, it was by the the Green School District. So yeah. to enact rational policy to keep our students safe from gun violence, we do recognize that we live in a rural area with a long tradition of hunting and sportsman like use of guns. We respect that culture, but automatic rifles, armor, piercing bullets, clips and more and a handful of shells have nothing to do with Vermont hunt hunting culture. This item, this item should not be sold. We favor background checks extending to gun shows, and we favor waiting periods so that background checks can be can be thorough. Over time, this and other measures will save the lives of students and staff. So the VSBA as a whole took no position because they requested that we brought it to each individual board. So I don't know if you guys have any, I know that we talked about, but since we all sign resolutions in favor of keeping schools safe, this is by any means, this language is not used, it just guides um, our executive director if she is in the state house, right? And um, this type of legislation is being talked up, it gives her a point of reference. So that's all we vote on. So all of these uh, resolutions are, are, are guidelines, so it doesn't mean that... that so thing. should this be for us, or should this be more for the WCSU? So it, so it would be... The floor is voting for, for, the entire for the entire supervisory unit. When is that happening? Mm -hmm. uh, Couple October, weeks. October 19th. Right, but I... Before there's... Yeah. The time to discuss it. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I agree. I we were going to discuss those were the two, but we didn't get to the get to DSBA them. today yeah. as the full. We thought with Matthew that it was not as relevant as everything else. So, so I would I go back it. to our letter yeah. Yeah. that we modified that yeah. was different from the Montpelier letter. I, I'm of two minds of this. I'm of the mind of how I feel personally, mm -hmm. but I'm also of the mind as a school board, I'm uncomfortable. I'm, I'm uncomfortable with as, as far as that goes. Okay. You know, it's, is it, is it, it's hard for me to answer because I'm torn between, you know, and I'm not looking for a final answer. I just wanted some some, some guidance. I mean, like you I know, said, this is here, guidance here's right the right example I use yeah. for if we really wanted to impact school safety, yeah. really, and this is just my opinion, if we really wanted to make an impact and put pressure on the legislature, we would take a stand on um, Trauma opioids, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. That's that in my mind, that's a that's an ongoing risk for school safety. And we see occurrences every day, but the school board's not taking, school boards not, don't take stances on that kind of thing. Um, I'm comfortable taking a stance on school safety. Yeah. Um, I, I'll, I'll be quiet, you've heard what I say, and let other people say what they have to say. Semi-automatic. Semi-automatic. Yeah, they didn't think you should use semi-automatic rifles for deer hunting. They thought it was not fair. 
Not fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deer or any, it wasn't really hunting, but they yeah. could not find anything to support their answer. And so the gun lobby has, you know, it's just kind of gotten a hold on that. So, I mean, that's, it's a, it's a hunting culture thing. I don't, I don't. It's a so gun culture thing. Yeah, and, and, so, so if I summarize, maybe the the only part that we really are in agreement is uh, is it's the student safety. So so it would be that we sort of what our resolution said we favor background checks. We actually didn't even say background checks. No, mm -hmm. we, well, we just said um, because you're representing more than just this board. Yeah. And because this was such a hot topic when it came about two years ago, um, I would just caution you to represent everyone, yeah. only having talked to this board. Yeah. Yeah. And I just wonder if, because there's going to be no time to meet, if you even just share it as information with the other boards yeah. to say this is one of the, because they may choose to meet in yeah. between. I don't know, but I know this is a very yeah. um, sensitive topic to all boards. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. our, you know, what we what what we recommended as the BBA, BSBA was to not take a position. Okay. You know, That's it was brought it was brought too. by the Green School District. Yeah. So I just wanted. So well, I, I would support not taking a position. Would, yeah. Okay. So that's well. what I was trying to get. So yes. not take and a I position at this moment because it was so. I don't, yeah, I don't think that's us. And the position so that we took is reflected in the resolution that we passed yeah. okay. last year. Okay. Tell me. That was the town meeting. Yeah. yeah. Could, and we, I, we, had, we had asked them for changes on their wording, and no changes were received. So. Yeah. So. Can I just yeah. Going back to what you were talking about, the maintenance of the building. Mm -hmm. If there is a consolidation, does that mean not get your mark for that? I yes. think that's something this board needs that's to talk about. I know that um, talking to other principals, their board, other boards are having that conversation. This this school has the, um, the largest the biggest. largest capital. Um, you have the most money mm -hmm. in the bank. Yeah. Um, I know that other boards are talking about spending spending that yep. money and not letting others touch yeah. it mm -hmm. if consolidation happens. Mm -hmm. um, very seriously talking about it. And it's probably something that, you know, at some point is going to need to be So I, I've I thought about it. Yeah. Um, I, I don't favor spending it so no one else can get it. I, yeah. You're not um, going to be able to we can't But here's, <laughs> here's what my thought around it has been. I'm very sensitive to the fact that we have the biggest debt. Mm -hmm. We've got a big chunk in capital. If it's a forced merge, I would like us to think about using that money to pay down the debt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. then it benefits everybody. Yeah. Yeah. We bring in, you know, at that point, it's going to be $800,000, $750,000. That, that's going to pay down a huge chunk of our debt. Mm -hmm. That I think it's a consideration. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't favor, let's just spend the money. It, it would be, for our school, it wouldn't make any sense. We don't, you know, I don't want to spend it on stuff we don't need. You're not going to spend And, and I, if we don't have a reason to spend it, I'm not uncomfortable bringing it forward. But my only thought around it was it, it, it might make it more palatable to everybody if we took that money and paid down the debt. For East Montpelier, I think they would like it. For the other communities, if we're paying down almost a million dollars of our debt, it's going to make it more palatable and easier for those communities as well, because that's a big chunk of the debt that we could take off the books. So I, I, I don't think we need to decide tonight, but that's where my thinking was around that money. So I guess my fear, just to bring that up, is, mm -hmm. you know, we then, if if other schools are spending money and we're going to eliminate the money, then aren't we going to be in that same place that yeah, exactly. we could be, you know, where mm -hmm. we need to go into debt to fix buildings because we're spending it on things that maybe, may, you know, and I don't okay. disagree with you. It's okay, five pounds worth of debt. Yeah. Right, but I, I don't disagree that 
paying down debt would be a great well, idea. I, but I think it's just, just a, it, it, it could be part of a broader discussion outside of our board, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Would would the if there's a merge for the towns that are going to merge, would you rather see that money come through? So there's all this money to do work on schools, of which our, our school wouldn't need a lot of it, but some schools conceivably mm -hmm. could really benefit from it. Or is it more valuable to pay down the debt, knowing that we're going to be starting at ground zero on capital money? So I I, I agree with you. I, I think we need to do some stuff at school that we have you know earmarked so that. We, we do those things that we that, that we had on the line, but I the, I rather use that money for for students. So if the interest in the debt right now, from what I understand, we, we had a pretty good deal in that in that interest. I rather see that money used for uh, better student outcomes in lighting in you know in Calif or in Romney. Like you know, there's some. Some buildings that don't have the capacity. I, I would feel bad if Romney just, uh, not Romney, but uh, like Worcester just decided to down their entire thing on, on something else that is not for their students. I'd rather have this money be used for exactly what we did, which is improve the, the, the building for the teachers. Yeah, and it's not our call, it's no. their call. Right? Well, no, I, I know, but you, we can so, decide what to do with our money. <laughs> so I have two thoughts on this. One, the mm -hmm. debt analysis, the, the business analysis yeah. as a school district as an operation is going to open some eyes mm -hmm. because towns that think that they're in a certain position are going to be inescapably corrected because I don't think that they're going to find themselves in the position that they sort of are smugly thinking that they're in. Their balance sheet is going to look a lot different at the end of that analysis. And I think ours, by contrast, is going to look really, really good. And that's going to come as a surprise. So that's my first comment. My second comment is that um, while it's one board, one budget, that doesn't mean that all of these same accounts couldn't basically come across as they are. No, they can't come yeah, across as they are. There'll be one capital fund that budget, one that's it. There's one budget. There's one budget. But it, but it can be planned yeah, yeah, it can be, yes. it could be in a yeah, way that like occurs that. across so the potato, issue. potato, but it could be planned. Yep. And that's, so sort of, that's why I keep sort of going back to this, like, that's my biggest frustration about this entire process. Everybody's operating from this place of fear. It's a fear. Mm -hmm. And it's misplaced. Because at the end of the day, it's a whole bunch of very well-intentioned and well-informed people who are going to do, by and large, the right things by the kids. And so, uh, uh, you know, doing something like spending your entire cash is incredibly deleterious to that. That's uh, clearly not in the spirit of any of this. Um, doing something like taking the almost million dollars that we carefully scrimped and saved mm -hmm. and putting it to pay our debt down mm -hmm. is exactly the behavior that we've been modeling through this process all the way. So I am hopeful, ever hopeful, that the other towns will sometime stop operating out of a place of fear and see something different. Before we adjourn, I have a request. I, and I, I think it was in our packet, but it had come earlier, and it might be that letter from Margaret, I don't know, that was sent to board chairs. Yes. I would appreciate getting those forwarded on when they go to you, Ruben. So we all have them. So I should take the filter out of my outlook that just puts them in the garbage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, please. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> That's your that job as chairman to keep us informed. I apologize. <laughs> oh, okay. Paul has his hand up. Yes, Paul. I think it's really sad. Look at where we 
we are right now and assume that everything is <coughs> rosy. But, you know, when I was a kid, <coughs> a lot of the towns that we drive through regularly were very active towns, and they aren't anymore <coughs> for more reasons than just what we're talking about tonight. But <coughs> one of the ones that is going to kill a lot more of them is just, you know, this thing that you call fear. Well, the fear is realistic. Because some of us have seen this happen. And when you take <laughs> the generations, you know, our grandchildren and great grandchildren, and they're <coughs> still going to live in some of these places, maybe. Maybe they'll be like some of the places you go out in the woods now, where there's just cellar holes and trees that big growing in them that were open fields when I was a kid. <clears throat> and maybe you don't care about those places anymore. You know, having a little more bureaucracy is more important. And, uh, and you think you're doing a big favor for the kids. Well, we're all interested in what happens for these kids. Because we all have kids and grandkids and whatever. But, you know, the, the communities that they grow up in, have a great deal to do with what they become. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <clears throat> when you don't, and when you just discard that and you say, we're doing things just for the kids, you're forgetting all the things that that community does for those kids. <clears throat> and so, you know, when you say things like you just said, I just find that so shallow. It's not based on any experience. <laughs> over time. And, you know, I I grew up and went to school in Montpelier <clears throat> 50 years ago when I graduated with my cohorts who were all from these surrounding towns that are now part of U32. <clears throat> you know, when I sit here and think that the, about the possibilities of some of these schools in these towns where my friends grew up, uh, you know, possibly no longer having the center of town and not having, you know, getting on a bus and disappearing, you know, kids mm -hmm. do this, they don't longer have <coughs> this important link to where home is. And I don't care what you say, you don't have the experience to be saying that. And that irritates me. <laughs> uh, you know, and that, I, I just get sick of hearing that because it just plain isn't true. You haven't had the experience to know it. <clears throat> Paul, that was immensely rude. You're belittling people that are putting their time into this. They're trying their damnedest. And you come up with these... What did I say, Bruce, when I started doing it? Well, you can say this for a while. Me, did, you? did you say it? Paul hasn't listened to you What did you time. say? Remember, I had the exact same uh, growing up that you had. Oh, okay. Uh, well, no, I don't know as you did. I'm some sure of it, some of it you may have, but uh, I think they're doing a great job, and I'm glad that they're I'm glad you do. Well, if it's all right, if I, if I could weigh in. Um, around school closure, I agree with you. And that's what's fueled my support of mergers. I think, and talk to the, the Doty School Board, I think unmerged Doty is it, and this is just my opinion, and I could be wrong, but my belief that fuels my interest in merger, I think if Doty's left by itself, it's got less of a chance of continuing than if they merge. Because when they lose their sm small school grants in about two years, that's 10% of their budget is gone and they're going to have to make that up within their own town and i know their board and their town are very worried about it if we merge there's a chance i i think there's a better chance they can keep their school than if they're on their own 
So from my perspective, I'm not looking at mergers to close schools. I'm looking at mergers to preserve what we've got. And I think we've got a better chance of doing that merge than we do separately. So uh, uh, we have different takes on how to get to the same place. But for me, I, I have no interest whatsoever in closing schools. And it's my belief that merger increases the likelihood, at least in our five towns, that the smaller schools could still exist. And, with and I know it's a difference of opinion, but I want you to understand from, from my perspective, that's my perspective and how I view it. Uh, particularly around Doty. I think Doty is a huge, just my opinion, is a huge risk if they're gonna have to go, there, go it on their own. I don't, I don't think that's fair to say, but I think at this point I'm going to call us done uh, because this has, in my opinion, become um, not a healthy conversation. So our official business is concluded and I'm going to adjourn us at 9.38.